Hi, my name is Sierra Drew, and this is my 2019 climb of the Sierra High Route, a year that saw 230% snowpack. What is the Sierra High Route? It's 195 miles of cool, crisp, clean, clear mountain air, 115 miles of cross-country traversing, and 38 mountain passes. The High Route isn't for everyone, but if it's for you, I hope you go out there and get it. Also, just so I know whether or not I'm supposed to keep making videos, please subscribe and hit the bell notification below. As of this video currently, I have no subscribers, so... Well, I guess that's that. Join me as we tackle the high route together. I don't think that it was a wise decision to climb Mount Ritter. It during this time of year with that much snow, it was pretty dangerous. I, I did not, I would have liked to have had an ice axe on Mount Ritter, quite frankly. Um, so with the amount of snow, with the general difficulty of the high route for this year, I think adding in the uh, extra credit of Mount Ritter was, was uh, I think that played a lot into to the injury that happens uh, to me over the next day or so. I come down the next day and yeah, I wake up uh, cold boots, cold boots, wet socks. So the worst part about climbing at night and finishing at night is that, yep, when you wake up in the morning, good morning, you're putting on wet boots and wet socks. That's never a good way to start the day. Yeah, wet boots, wet socks for a day start is about as miserable as you can get. Uh, I emotionally accepted that ahead of time. Let's see, how am I doing today? Well, my knees feel fine from my strain a couple days ago. Ankles also feel fine. Although last night, I coughed really hard and kind of threw out a little bit of my lower back. So we'll see if that's just like a thing or if that's like a thing. Um, let's see here. We're gonna be wearing our micro spikes. Look at that, man! Look at that—that that, that balloon stuff is kind of holding up there. It's not good, but Lord willing, at the end of the day today, we'll be in Red's Meadow, which means that I can have a burger and some fries and a pizza and some sleep and a shower, and I won't look quite so much like Grizzly Adams. I don't normally look this grizzled. This is like a, this is not really a thing for me, but I don't know. How do you feel about Grizzly Adams, Drew? Huh? Like or comment in the sections below. Uh, yeah, look at this mountain, man. Look at that thing. Woo! I gotta tell you, that was that was one hard mountain. Anyways, this is Lake Catherine. Pretty cool. I gotta say, it was the most pretty night's sleep I could see the entire Milky Way, like, like clearly. And so that was. Very spectacular. It was also really warm. It wasn't windy at all. Um, as far as high mountain lakes go, I mean, this is this is really something. Uh, it's got everything you want in that, you know, barren wasteland, new life, uh, dangerous. Just all those kind of feelings that you kind of look for in this kind of stuff. So. Anyway, I am trying to beat the sun because I don't want to walk four miles in slushy sun cups. I'd rather walk four miles in kind of hard sun cups. So rather than uh, sit here and feel bad for myself because everything's wet and cold and I'm hurting, I thought I would just get up and just double down on the suffering and try to run out while the ice is still good and I can actually make really good time on the sun cups. So no breakfast, no, well, there's no water up here. Uh, it's too cold. So there's no water anywhere. Uh, so yeah, just waking up and bombing out. Um, although I gotta say, there are these really cute little birds on the lake here. I don't know if you can see them or not. Anywho, oh no, they're really cute though. They've just kind of been like scooping around and like picking up little bugs and stuff with the river. Wow, I'm glad I will never do that again. But if I did, I would know how. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, we got, we're cold, we're miserable, we're suffering, but we're like 
12 hours away from, from like food and hot stuff that I don't have to like work my butt off for. So, I just gotta put on these wet boots and I'm telling you, I'm having to work myself up for that. Like, I don't know. To get psyched. Wet boots, wet socks, ice cold toes, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's do this thing. Ugh. Miserable, miserable. And uh, come down over that North Pass, and I can see that I wasn't wrong. It is another 10 to 15 miles of Sun Coast today. Look at Thousand Isles Lakes in July. That stuff is just frozen over. <coughs> you think that I was like spring mountaineering or something? Anyway, I thought it was interesting. I got this like thousand yards stare just thinking about it actually. Come down Thousand Isles Lakes and just, that's all it was. It was just sun cups. It was pretty. Uh, came over uh, White Bark Pass and, no, it was Unnamed Pass. Or one of them, I can't remember. Really. Come down and saw the Nidiver Lakes and thought I'd get cute with the route and I thought I would just kind of pull left a little bit instead of going right and following the map and uh, wound up getting lost. Uh, or not lost, just wound up having to track about a mile and a half through snow in the wrong direction. That was pretty disappointing. I came up and over, refound the route, uh, saw a ski mountaineer. He was the first person I'd seen in ages. Saw a ski mountaineer and uh, followed his tracks the problem was that I followed his tracks to Shadow Lake, another two miles in the wrong direction. Came back, uh, so that was the second time I'd gotten lost that day. Uh, came back, went up to Iceberg Lake. Now there's supposed to be a trail that takes you up to Iceberg Lake. That was not the case for me, because uh, there was too much snow. Well, made it to Iceberg Lake. Hmm. It's pretty. There was supposed to be a trail, I guess, but I think it was covered in six feet of snow. So that wound up taking like an hour longer than I thought. And then I've been lost three times today. I've had to backtrack over five miles. It's been a rough one. Uh, I think I'm just a little eager to get to resupply. That happens. Uh, Whenever I get to Red's Meadow, which is about eight miles from here. I'm gonna have another four like really hard going miles, and then after that it should be mostly trail miles, but we'll see. Um, anyway. Yeah, Iceberg Lake. No trail, just snow. So I pretty much just bushwhacked and battled my way through uh, snow and ice and rocks and trees and sun. Oh, sun was so hot. Uh, get up to Iceberg Lake, which was tough, and then get up, go up to Cecil Lake, and that was also its own kind of its own kind of experience. Uh, just, just plowing through the forest in the snow and trying to find trails and trying to keep on track. It's, it's pretty difficult. I mean, all in all, you'd think that going through the forested areas would be a little bit easier, but it's harder to find your landmarks. It's harder to shoot for things. It's harder to kind of know where you're at, where you're going. And, uh, and, you, and you post hole when you walk by these trees. And I mean, you're post holing so deep, too. And uh, so get up, get up there, get up to Minaret Lake. See, it's a lake. About 600 feet higher than Iceberg. Thinking about investing in some snowshoes or something. One more pass today. Unbelievably difficult. Unreal. Unreal. And just having to cross river after river after river and get up there having to take my all my clothes off again as I cross the lakes and ride around 
right around coming down Minaret Lake, my Achilles on my left heel and my ankle just it feels like a limp noodle. It's just it's just flopping around in my boot, and I am sure that something's going on. I have no idea, but it hurts. Um, and it hurts walking downhill. It's it's okay walking uphill, but coming down, it's just it's just got no support, no strength. I think it's probably the 30 miles of sun cups that I walked. It was just exhausting for me. And well, uh, I get onto this uh, ridge. I'm looking for uh, the inconspicuous saddle. There are two inconspicuous saddles uh, on the high route. And both of them are inconspicuous, yes. And uh, because of their inconspicuous nature, unless you have them well detailed on GPS, they are very hard to hit. So this one, I actually walked a full mile uh, east when I was supposed to be a mile west. Um, I, I missed it, so I wound up, like the Israelites, like walking literally around the inconspicuous saddle the only real benefit to walking around the inconspicuous saddle was that I got one of the coolest campsites I think I've ever seen. And I won't remember the pain of walking around the mountain anywhere near as much as I'll remember the beauty of that campsite. It, just, it looked like that was something that was just biblical. And my view the next morning of the minarets and Nancy Pass and I mean just just unbelievable. Good morning. That is the view from the morning. That's Nancy Pass. I'm we'll going over that here in a little bit. We got the shaky camera. There's my cool tree. Yeah. There we go. Look at the view down there, man. Wow, that's a big waterfall down there too. That is legitimately what I'm waking up to. Not the worst view in the world. Uh, moving over to, to Nancy Pass. Nancy Pass uh, was, I, I thought that because of its name, it was going to be easy. It wasn't. It was completely full of snow and sun cups and rivers, crossing more rivers to get over there. Uh, getting up to Nancy Pass was, was tough. This is the view of the inconspicuous saddle from Nancy Pass. It's a big gray mound. You want to go split right through that. I wound up walking all the way around it, so it comes through the canyon. <coughs> well, here we are at the top of Nancy Pass. Uh, there's the minarets behind me. Boy, are those savage peaks right there. I say that's redder, but I don't, I don't know. These are just look at this. You can see all the snow. There's a lot of snow. And uh, here's the view from uh, over this way. So I'll be going into that over there. My ankle was hurting a lot from the day before. And coming down the talus, coming down the scree from Nancy Pass, it, it was not getting any better. It wasn't improving at all. It was, it was hurting every bit as much as it was the day before. And I thought that what was going to happen was that I was going to hit Superior Lake and hit the Bex Lake Trail and be able to just kind of bomb down to Mammoth. And that is uh, far from what happened. So this is my trail. I've been up. I have to hike it for about six miles. Super visible, you know. Doesn't look like any of the other surrounding things at all. Ridiculous. What happened was is that I wound up not being able to follow the trail at all. And a lot of the trail had been washed out from the amount of water. Uh, the trail was hidden, buried under snow. Um, and it was hot. Uh, you can see from my spot that I am all over the I'm all over the mountain here on this day, and I got lost again. And but I knew that I was close to Mammoth, and so I finally just went. You know what? I, I, I did the first five days without any GPS, and I thought that's crazy. 
So I, I, I checked my, my cell service and I got I got internet, so I was I downloaded all trails. I'd never really used all trails before. But I was literally just kind of sitting there on the side of the mountain trying to find like which way to go through the trees to get to uh, to get to Devil's Post Pile. I downloaded all trails and used that, and that kind of at least got me to where uh, where I could see a trail. Even once I found the trail, uh, it took a ton of work to get down to Devil's Post Pile. But when I finally made it, um, I was hobbling. I had two broken trekking poles. My ankle was, and my Achilles was just shot, and I was exhausted. My face was burned, uh, my nose was burned, and I had realized that after going through about, about 40 miles of sun cups, getting lost, going through canyons, going through these big high passes, I realized that if I was going to make it through the next you know, 10, 12 days of high route, I knew that I had some of the more difficult passes still before me and I knew that I had to like really prepare, really go to war. Being in Mammoth was really difficult because I, 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 I knew I was injured. Yeah, so kind of embarrassing. Um, you know, pushed it just a little bit too hard there. It, it looks like, I mean, if I was able to go the pace that I was going uh, the first few days, then I could finish it in probably seven or eight days, but I'm going to try to finish it in 11 or 12. And, uh, yeah, so you can see the room is just total disaster. It's got everything scattered everywhere. But, yeah, I'd be, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't embarrassed or uh, frustrated. Um, on the other hand, it was the uh, by far the best six days um, of backpacking or mountaineering or whatever you want to call that experience. It was by far it was the most exciting, the most um, just you never knew what was going to happen next, what was going to what what it was going to look like on the other side. So for me, it's uh, I'm really anxious to get back out there, but I know that waiting for three nights, four nights. Just getting that rest in, and really focusing on finishing, um, finishing strong. And I mean, I would like to do the southern route, but just finishing the high route. I mean, nobody's even done it yet this year, so I feel like just finishing the Sierra high route this year would be a be a huge accomplishment. I'd probably be the only person to to do it. Maybe maybe somebody will finish it in September or something. But so I kind of I still want that, you know, and I want to just kind of stick to that goal. So. So that's what I'll be doing for the next few days, just resting and uh, maybe studying for my fantasy football draft. I don't know. But can't go for a walk, can't go for a hike, and it's over 100 degrees in Mammoth, so basically just sitting in the room and looking at maps. Yay. All right, well, that's that's where we're at for the next few days. So I was embarrassed, and I, did, I, I wanted to quit, and I, I called my wife and I said, hey, honey, you know, I really want to... I don't know if I can make it. I'm going to go. And I had all these plans, you know. Well, if I get hurt, then I can bail at Vermilion Valley or I can bail at Muir Show Ranch or I can bail at Bishop. And I had all my kind of bail spots. But I didn't like this idea that I had to have all these plans to quit. Um, I sat there <clears throat> and learned how to tape my ankle, tape my Achilles. I learned about the magic of KT tape, which uh, if you don't know, if you get a sprain out in the mountains, nothing is better than KT tape in my opinion. Uh, if you can't fix it with KT tape and Luca tape, then you, you're probably, uh, and I mean like a compression wrap, you're probably more injured than you, than you should be. Well, this is the last video here before I take off. Um, well, the ankle does feel uh, a lot better. Um, it was never like fully swollen. <clears throat> it just hurt a lot to like kind of put it in weird places. So I've been here for three nights, <clears throat> just kind of resting and, uh, Certainly not something I had in mind, but I think um, better than better than pushing on or something stupid like that. So you can see my pack is over here. It's massive. I mean, this is has 11 days of food in it. My pack has never been this big before. So uh, yeah, it's got 11 days of food. It's got um, pretty much everything you need for snow stuff. Um, 
changed out my hat. I feel not sweat quite so much. So the plan is just to take it really slow um, for these first four days and take it super slow until the pack weight drops a little bit from the food going down and the ankle gets a little bit stronger. So as that ankle gets stronger, the pack weight goes down, we'll start picking up the pace a little bit more. And um, I can already see a lot of the snow from the Mammoth Ridge that has area hopefully we'll be looking at a lot less snow and a little bit easier travel uh, boy am I nervous I mean I'll tell you this trip has been uh, yeah just I'm just I'd be lying if I was saying I didn't think I was like kind of kind of scared a little bit but you know high route in the snow is, is a thing it's a big deal so anyway I'm pretty confident though, my ankle's feeling a lot better and I learned how to do all the different taping things with KT tape and athletic tape and braces and learned a lot more about that stuff than I did before. I still have a little bit of a sore throat um, from earlier in the trip. And other than that, my back's a little bit sore, but I think it's just from laying in bed for three days. I feel a little fat from eating pizza, almost exclusively, so there's that. And then... Uh, Hopefully we'll be up tomorrow around 7, out of here, and hit the post office, then go to Red's Meadow, grab some lunch, and then I'm going to get a late start from Red's Meadow up to Mammoth Crest, and hopefully just be able to kind of take it easy tomorrow, and not really have to think about it too much, so that is the, that's the plan. Alright, uh, next time I see you will probably be, hopefully Red's Meadow. Made it to Red's Meadow and feeling pretty good here. So, this is it. We're gonna take off for the next stretch. The next big leg is from Red's Meadow to Lake Italy, then Lake Italy to Ducey Basin and Ducey Basin to Kings Canyon. So, that should take, I'm guessing, 10 to 11 days. And we will see you up on top of Mammoth Crest here shortly.